everyone. In this video, we'll see the remaining portion of constraint optimization methods. In this, we'll be discussing about augmented Lagrangian method and uh, polynomial time series. Finally, we'll see successive method. What is Lagrangian multiplier? It's a powerful method with deep interpretations and implications. And we can append each constraint functions like this to the objective function. This is our objective function multiplied by a scalar. This is a scalar value for that constraint called a Lagrangian multiplier. And so overall, the Lagrangian function is given by L of x comma lambda, where lambda is the Lagrangian multiplier, f of x plus summation of if there are n number of i number of constraints then sum all the constraints each constraint will carry it own Lagrangian multiplier and ci of x minus ui which is nothing but the constraint which is been converted into uh, equalized function the original constraint problem is deduced by solving for both an optimum x as well as optimum set of Lagrangian multiplier See, the original variable x is called primary variable and whereas the uh, Lagrange multiplier is called dual variables. The duality theory is both useful as well as beautiful, but we are not going to touch that part in our class. See, this is an example. The same old example has been taken here. So, this is our objective function, the blue line, and this is our inequality constraint. And this is equality constraint we have. So with respect to this, the feasible re region is uh, this much. I would say this much is the feasible region. Okay, but my function is this much. So what I do, I do introduce a, a, a multiplier and convert the function. The nonlinear function will be converted into linear function. Okay. And how it happens, you can see by increasing the lambda, I can bring this way. So you can see one, two, four, eight are the numbers. By increasing the numbers, values of lambda, I can bring this much function. And uh, there is an optimum lambda. We have to choose in even in within the lambda, there is an optimum lambda is there because you see it is changing the uh, direction. Okay, in the feasible region. So. Uh, what lambda will give you a better function matters a lot. So, there is an optimum lambda for which we can obtain the constrained solution in x by minimizing the Lagrangian for that lambda. That matter. So, it's both uh, lambda also has to be optimized and f of x also has to be optimized. Apart from this, uh, so uh, till now we have discussed a few. Uh, constrained problems which has been converted to non-constrained problem and how the things has been solved has been seen and here in MATLAB we have a function called f min constraint which is uh, which is by using that we can address four algorithms those algorithm I'm just uh, going to address in this class you can see these are the interior point constraints interior point algorithm can be used uh, an active set can be used, sequential quadratic programming can be used, trusted region ref reflective, reflective algorithm can be used. We are not going to see much of it since I just got if it may be uh, helpful for you to complete your quality assessment by using this. Any of these functions you can try and then solve some problem and uh, showcase your quality assessment. So that's why I've just kept Okay, so interior point method, what it does, it's a it, it may be a linear or non-linear programming method that achieve optimization by going through the middle of the solid defined. So this defined this is the solid area, not on the around the surface. It is going through the middle of the solid uh, defined by the problem. So that is called interior point. Active set approaches another kind. So here, uh, it is only for equality constraints always remains in active sets. So it is only for equality constraint problems. The search direction dk is calculated 
and minimize the objective function while uh, remaining on active constraint boundaries. So, equality, if you have some equality constraint, you take the equality constraint and remain on equality constraint. Try to uh, minimize the objective function by remaining on the active constraint boundary, equality constraint boundary. That is very important. That is called active set approach. Then other two are sequential quadratic programming and it is iterative method for non-linear optimization it is used. Very important thing is your objective function as well as the constraints are twice continuously differentiable. That is very, very important. This problem, if, if the problem is unconstrained, then the method reduces to Newton method for finding a point where the gradient of objective function vanishes. If the problem has one equality constraint, then the method is equivalent to applying Newton's method to the first order optimization condition or KKT conditions of the problem. So, quadratic problem is something reduces to Newton method, depends on the type of constraint what has. Unconstraints there, it is directly reduces to Newton method. And finding a point is easiest, that is gradient approaches can be obtained or followed over there. If um, equality constraints are there, then it is, uh, it's again, it is a Newton method, but only first order optimum condition is enough, or KKT condition is enough. That we have to keep in mind for a sequential quadratic optimization program. Trust free chain reflectivity, what is that? It's, it's the basic idea is to approximate f with the simpler function q. Of course, what we do, we uh, convert the optimization function, which is uh, non-linear, into linear. <coughs> That's what we are trying to do. We approximate it or uh, linearize it. So, uh, same way here, the f has to be, the f has to be approximated with a simpler function called q and which reasonably reflects the behavior of the function f in a neighborhood n around the point x. That's a basic idea. The neighborhood is the trust region and trial step s is computed by minimizing over n. This is the trust region sub problem. So, minimize the q of s and where s is from n. And the current point is updated simply like x x plus s yes, if f of x plus s is less than f of x otherwise the problem point remains unchanged and n so the trust region is shrinking and the trial step computation is repeated so that's about the the four algorithm which can be done by using your matlab f min con constraints okay constraint problems interior point problem method can be done by using this active set problem approach can be done please explore how to do it I just need to pass the methodology uh, to the cf min function apart from your constraints uh, um, optimization function constraint and um, uh, non-constraints uh, all these things you define you need to give which methods supposed to be adapted to optimize the problem okay and for that you can use these are the four methods it's it's a i think 2016 version which paper is using at the time when i prepared the slide in that these four methods are there now there are so many methods have come but obviously these four are uh, here and there it touches your syllabus that's why i'm just taking up this and also as interesting that's why i've just taken these four interior point just we have finished in the previous discussion and active set also kind of interior method only and SQP is going to follow and trust region is the second internal portion. So these are the four methods has been used uh, in MATLAB function called fmincon. Okay, with this short intro, let us move to the next topic, polynomial time algorithm for uh, linear programming. So uh, what is polynomial time algorithm? And there are again two kind of class of uh, polynomial time algorithm available. One is called uh, um, uh, deterministic polynomial other one is non-deterministic polynomial however it is deterministic it's a polynomial kind only so class p means it's a polynomial time algorithm class p means it's a deterministic polynomial the class of decision problem wherever you want to make some decision okay that can be solved by using 
O of P of N, where P of N is the polynomial on N. We have a polynomial. By solving the polynomial, you can find the solution. Uh, why use this existence of polynomial time bound as a criterion, if you ask? If not, it would be very in inefficient and it has got a nice closer properties and machine is independent in a strong sense. That's the reason it has been used. This criterion has been used. What is the solubility of decision problem? So when you when you ask me what is the solubility of the decision problem? Yes, of course, it is solvable in polynomial time. But it is intrackable. In polynomial, you it's not possible for us to track the convergence. That's a problem. In some time, is there any unsolvable uh, problems available as a problem, real problem for polynomial techniques, if you ask, polynomial time technique, if you ask? Yes, of course, for class P, a uh, halting problem is the unsolvable problem. No polynomial algorithm has been found for that or nor has the impossibility of such an algorithm been proved. It's uh, uh, about the class P and there is next is uh, class NP. NP is a non-deterministic polynomial. Informally, what is NP? That is polynomial time algorithm in that NP. What is NP if you ask me? Um, NP is a class of decision problem uh, for which a given proposed solution for a given input can be checked quickly to see if it's really a solution or not. Formally, if you ask me, it is very simple. Uh, the class of decision problem that can be solved by non-deterministic polynomial algorithms is called NP. A non-deterministic algorithm has got two stages and um, and that takes its input an instant i of a decision problem and does the following. So, Gaussing stage, what is that Gaussing stage is an arbitrary string s is generated that can be uh, that can be thought of as a Gauss at a solution for a given instant. That is the Gaussing stage. And uh, what is uh, verification stage? Next is verification stage, a deterministic algorithm take both i and s as input and check if s is a solution to instant i or not. So, you will have a set of solutions that is your gaussing stage and you will have i and s both will be given as input to verify whether it is a proper solution or, or not. So, that is about the, uh, the non-deterministic algorithm the NP steps. NP algorithm solves a decision problem if, of course, it can be used for a decision, decision problem if and only if uh, for every yes instant of the problem, it returns yes on some execution. So, if there is a yes, it should write yes. Then it is, it can be that decision, those kind of decision problem can be solved by this. And non-deterministic algorithm is said to be a polynomially bounded if there is an a polynomial p such that for each input of size n for which the answer is yes there is some execution of the algorithm that produces a yes output in at most of the p of n steps so if you look into it non deterministic subset will be the deterministic that's what you should understand from this last point that is very clearly explained in the next so what we try to say the relationship between the P and NP is clearly given here. You can see NP non-deterministic polynomial is the highest set and the deterministic polynomial is the inner set. So, P is the subset of N, NP. I is the instant, uh, instant input and that is subset of P. Okay. That means if the i is subset of p, then the same i will be subset of n p as well. So every decision problem solvable by a polynomial time deterministic algorithm is also solvable by polynomial time non-deterministic algorithm. That is very very clear over here. If there is an instant i which is a, a subset of p, then obviously that i will be a subset of n p as well. So if every decision problem which is solvable by P will be solvable by NP class of algorithm also. Okay, that is the understanding you should have here. So, to see this, uh, observe that any deterministic 
algorithm can be used as a checking stage of non-deterministic algorithm. We know non-deterministic algorithm has got two steps in it. Okay, and uh, one is gas stage, the other one is uh, uh, checking stage. So the checking stage will be if uh, if, uh, if, uh, if there is no gas. Deterministic means what? There is already solutions are available determined. So you need to just map a decision has to be mapped. So that type of problem means only checking is needed, is it so and so. That checking alone you have to do, that is deterministic. In case non-deterministic, only checking will be there. So deterministic algorithm can be viewed as a checking stage of non-deterministic algorithm. That's the point. Okay, if I is subset of P and A is a, any polynomial deterministic algorithm for I, we can obtain a polynomial non-deterministic algorithm for i merely by using the a as a checking stage and ignoring the gas. So that's why i is subset of p implies i is subset of np. So with this you have some clarity between the relation between p and np. That is deterministic polynomial or non-deterministic polynomial time series algorithm.